In 2014, Ferrari made a car that was undrivable. It's been said a million times that the F14T was the car that understeered and oversteered, both at the same time. So I've been watching loads of onboards to figure out what was wrong with it, and it brought about a strange realization. Let me explain. Just look at this. It's Alonso at Abu Dhabi, and this car looks an absolute handful. The car looks bad on traction, but then as he turns it into the left, it understeers on the way in, and then Fernando gets a load of oversteer on the exit. And it's a similar thing with the next corner, a really dreadful handling car. Now, in my analysis, I did notice some strange things with this clip, but we'll come back to that a bit later. Now, we know Alonso is a driver that likes a touch of understeer. The video's just up here. But what about Kimi Raikkonen? He's a driver that's actually the opposite. He likes a positive front end and can deal with some oversteer. So maybe he fared a bit better. <laughs> Look at this, it's Kimi earlier in the season at Red Bull Ring. And being honest, it looks no better. In turn one, he gets horrible understeer, meaning he loses a load of speed and running wide. Then at turn three, instead of understeer on turning, he gets a massive chunk of oversteer, meaning he has to correct it before turning into the corner again. Then at turn five, the understeer is back again. This car isn't just bad, it's unpredictably bad. The drivers just don't know what it's going to do next. And without doubt, this car looks horrible. But why is the car this difficult? So bad that even two world champions couldn't drive it. Ferrari have underperformed with two world champions uh, in their ranks. 2014 came with a load of rule changes. One of the bigger ones in F1 history. Going from the 2.4 litre V8s that sounded like this to the 1.6 litre turbo V6s that sounded like this. And on that note, would you want to drive one of those V8 F1 cars? Well, we're running a competition to win a drive in the 2012 Lotus F1 car with coaching from me. Just click up there or check out the link in the description to enter. Anyway, they also had the awful drop nose where the Ferrari looked like a vacuum cleaner and the Caterham looked like something else, along with brake-by-wire systems, and bigger batteries and motors for the hybrid systems. So the teams had to make massive changes to their chassis and make decisions on how to package up their cars. And this was the root of the issues for Ferrari. They made the decision to package their car differently to everyone else, with the engine as far forward as possible. They focused on making most compact power units possible to have the skinny side pods and the skinny rear end of the car. They even moved the oil tank from behind the driver to inside the gearbox case to make more space. This all meant that both the flow to the diffuser and through the rear wing could be improved, hoping they could make significantly more downforce that way. However, Mercedes went the other way. They focused on the engine and making it the most efficient and powerful unit yet. And they did so at the cost of a touch of aerodynamic performance. But the big issue was that Ferrari ran with a turbo that was smaller than every other team. Ooh. That's kind of small. They had less power and they were less efficient. However, there was one more issue. Whilst they were down on power, they had issues with tuning their hybrid system. Just look at this. The power comes all in one lump and catches Kimi out. The power from the hybrid looks really unpredictable. So Kimi is getting on the throttle smoothly to come out of the corner. And then the hybrid is deploying its 160 horsepower right when he's on the limit, sending Kimi over the limit and then Kimi has to react and try to catch it. Then there's this one, it's Alonso at Silverstone. Now I think Alonso is definitely slightly better suited to the car, but you can see that he really has his work cut out. Alonso had to manage the throttle a lot through the traction zones by being very careful on the throttle and short shifting to limit the torque. Now this was was of course costing him time, but it enabled him to know what the car was going to do, which is really important as a driver. But you can see the car was also unstable on the entry to the corner as well. Look at the corrections he has to make on the way into the bend. Now, this is really unusual. Normally, a car will have a balance issue with oversteer or an issue with understeer. It's either reluctant to turn or wants to turn too much. But this car had both. Now, that doesn't really make sense until you look at enough onboards. And I have a theory to what's going on here. And I think it comes down to the rear mechanical grip. This car is actually okay once the aero load is on it, but it's the low speed braking and traction zones where it really struggles. From my experience, this comes down to the rear end being unstable and not keeping the tires working to their best. Now, of course, it could be the damping, the chassis, the heat going into the tires, absolutely anything. But there's definitely 
definitely an issue with the rear when the downforce is not on the car. And this is likely why Ferrari struggled to fix it throughout the entire season. But why then is the car understeering? Well, this actually comes down to the rear as well. I actually think that Ferrari had to make the car understeer. And here's why. Imagine a car with an extremely loose rear, like this one. Then add in a razor sharp front end. The car would be incredibly unstable, to the point where the drivers would be struggling not to spin. The car would be a handful on entry, apex and the exit. Whereas if the engineers dial in a little bit of understeer, you can make the car a little bit more predictable. The rear is less likely to overtake you on the way into a corner. And it looks like this is what Ferrari did they had to put some understeer into the car. It made the car slightly more drivable, but it was of course slower overall. And remember that Abu Dhabi clip I mentioned earlier? Well, it's been flying around the forums for years for being the worst handling car ever. And many people say things like the only cars to oversteer and understeer at the same time. But first, I've got to correct this. Technically, it understeered on entry, then oversteered on the exit. I do get what they mean. And the second thing is that I actually think Alonso isn't battling it. He's actually making the car do it. Look, on the massive slide, he's actually trailing the throttle into the corner, which is weird, and that would make it slide. Then before the next corner, he's very stabby on the throttle, and so the rears are still sliding. Then for the left, with tires that are very hot by this point, he stabs the throttle to 100% really early and of course the car slides. I think of course that a driver of Alonso standard is doing this deliberately. It's not him battling the car. Then look, it's daytime in this image and it's only free practice that was held in the day at Abu Dhabi. So he could be warming the tires for a push lap and this video actually makes it look worse than it really was. The car was of course bad, but not this bad. We made a whole video on Alonso's driving style here. And remember, you can still enter to drive a Formula One car yourself. Just click up here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.